I'm going to be showing you guys everything you need to know about ICT's market maker buy and market maker sell models. Here's what you can expect in this video. I'll be diving into the logic behind why market maker models work. I'll be showing you guys exactly how to predict the smart money reversal, which is the exact turning point in the market where it moves from buy to sell program or sell to buy program. I'll be showing you guys how to correctly identify the original consolidation, which is where you target in a market maker sell and market maker buy model. I'll be showing you how to trade each leg of the market maker model, which is why it's my favorite model out of all the ICT models that he's released. It's my favorite one to trade just because there's multiple legs, there's multiple opportunities. So if you miss one entry, it's all right, you'll wait for the next because you know it's going to be there. I'll be discussing institutional order flow, how to read it in both the market maker sell and buy model. And last of all, how to use SMT divergence in market maker models. Okay, this is key in predicting where the smart money reversal will take place. Okay, so let's dive straight into it. I'm going to show you guys what the market maker buy model looks like. And if this is your first time seeing it, you may be overwhelmed by it. It may seem like a lot, but don't worry, I'm going to simplify everything here. So with any market maker buy model, there is a original consolidation price leaves that consolidation. Okay, as it's trending down, this is categorized as the sell side of the curve. Price reaches an area where you can anticipate a reversal right? And everyone says that when they explain market maker models, but they don't go in depth, which I'm going to be going in depth in this video. Okay, so it reaches a level where you can potentially anticipate a reversal, right? And then there's a smart money reversal, and then price goes on the buy side of the curve. Okay, so in the sell side of the curve of a market maker buy model, you're not really worried about this, right? You're just waiting till price gives that confirmation that a smart money reversal has occurred, and price is now on the buy side of the curve. Okay, so you have an original consolidation price on the sell side of the curve will create a first stage distribution. This just means smart money is selling right here. Second stage redistribution, they're selling again. And then it reaches an area where you can anticipate potentially reversal. So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like in a second. But after the smart money reversal comes in, this is the reversal point in the market. This is when smart money is accumulating. Price will go up it'll retrace back down. This is categorized as the low risk buy. Okay. Once that low risk buy is in price will expand higher. It'll retrace back down, right? This is your first stage accumulation. It'll go up higher. It'll retrace back down. This is your second stage reaccumulation. Okay. The second stage reaccumulation or the second stage redistribution is ICT's favorite model to trade. He said, if there was only one model that he had to trade for the rest of his life if you could only choose one it would be this right here and the reason that is is because after price typically returns into a fair value gap in here right price will just expand out of there quickly this is where the sharpest moves happen okay you're likely to get low resistance liquidity runs in the second stage reaccumulation because the logic behind that is smart money is in a hurry to take price to the liquidity resting above, which is the original consolidation. Okay, so on the buy side of the curve, there's two main objectives, and this is the logic behind market maker models. Price reaches an area where smart money bought at. So smart money's long down here. As price is going higher, if smart money is long and they wanna sell their position, okay, they need someone to buy it from them, okay? For every buyer, there must be a seller. For every seller, there must be a buyer. So the purpose of the buy side of the curve is now to target these old highs that got left behind on the sell side of the curve. So your focus right now should not be, all right, how do I trade each leg of this? No, it's to identify where price is within a market maker buy or market maker sell model and understand the narrative of what is going on here. The narrative within this market maker buy model, okay, to keep it dead simple, smart money's long. If they want to sell those longs, someone needs to buy it from them, okay? In the retail books, we're taught to have our stops above old highs. So there's going to be stops above this high, stops above this high, and stops above these cluster of highs. On the buy side of the curve, it's going to reach for these highs. It's going to target these highs for a couple different reasons. When price breaks out above these highs, retail traders that are breakout traders, they're going to go long. So that creates buyers, okay? If anyone is short in here thinking that the market is going to go lower, right? We're all taught in books to have our stop losses above old highs. So if these highs are triggered, anyone short is getting stopped out of their short. That short is categorized as a buy stop. So they're technically buying back their short position that they're selling in here. Okay, so there's two forms 
of liquidity there or two ways that by taking out this high it's engineering liquidity on the buy side of the curve it's going to be targeting these highs in here from the left side but then also the point where price had the original consolidation and left that this is the ultimate objective so this is where it's going to be reaching for all right so if in any market maker model you're always aiming for the original consolidation for the main target right but you could still take off at these old highs because smart money right as price is taking out this old high right this is a potential area where they know that's where liquidity is going to be Okay, so you're not worried about trading the sell side of the curve in a market maker buy model. You're worried about trading the, I shouldn't say worried, but your focus should be trading the buy side of the curve, okay? And knowing that these highs are gonna be targeted, but this is the ultimate objective. So once that original consolidation is hit, once the target is hit, okay, the market maker model is complete. So we have the original consolidation, we have the sell side of the curve, which is when it leaves that original consolidation, it hits the smart money reversal then it goes to the buy side of the curve and then it takes out the original consolidation within this buy side of the curve there are multiple potential legs that you could trade you have the low risk buy all right this low risk buy is where you will find ict's 2022 model it's where you will find the breaker it's where you can trade the order block where price will tap into a discount fair value gap Okay, potentially sometimes go to an OTE. Those are things that you can find in the low risk buy. All right, the first stage accumulation, this is where price will typically retest inversion PD arrays from this side of the curve. So what's an inversion PD array? Well, if there's a fair value gap over here, you could extend that out and price can sometimes retest a specific level from over here, which can be an inversion order block, an inversion fair value gap, and retest that as support, right? It can do that. On the entire way up so i know that probably confused some people but i'll be explaining it in the real chart examples but let's just go straight back into this right here we have the first stage accumulation so i'll be diving into more of that in the real chart examples a little bit later in the video we have the first stage accumulation price will typically retrade into a fair value gap or an order block in this stage then price will leave that area in the second stage reaccumulation or it's always tapping into an order block or a fair value gap and then this is where the sharpest move to the upside will happen because they're in a hurry to take out the original consolidation the logic behind that is that smart money they're not going to offer such a deep retrace all the way back down to here okay as they don't want anyone with buy stops above here to remove that stop right they want all the liquidity that they can get Okay, so this is what a market maker buy model looks like. And your focus is on the buy side of the curve in a market maker buy model. And you're potentially getting an entry in the low risk buy, first stage accumulation, second stage reaccumulation. So I'm going to show you guys now how to identify the original consolidation. Okay, we're going to keep it extremely simple. Let's say in this example that we just looked at is a one minute chart. If you zoom out to an hourly time frame, this is what that market maker buy model will look like because you cannot see all the minor fluctuations that were on the one minute on the higher time frame. So to find original consolidation targets, typically what I will do from my experience, I'll zoom out to a higher time frame and I'll try and find a high, right? And then price leaves that high and creates a low. As it's on the buy side of the curve, as it starts trending higher, I'm just identifying that high and I'm targeting that high. Okay, so it just keeps it extremely simple. And I'll show you guys more of what this looks like when we look at real chart examples and you'll see exactly what I mean. But I'm just typically finding a higher high on the price chart, seeing when price leaves that area. This is the high that started the delivery lower. So as price is trading higher, this is the high that it's going to be targeting, right? And then on a lower time frame, it looks like an original consolidation because you do get to see those minor fluctuations in price, right? So that's typically how I'm finding my original consolidations, finding a high where price left that high and started to trade lower. That's where price is going to target on the way back up. And once you understand this, there's a limited opportunity when looking for market maker models because I can find this in price action anywhere and i know if i find this where price creates a high then a low then a higher high it seems dead simple but that on the lower time frame is going to look like this the ict market maker model so now let's take a look at the ict market maker sell model it's the exact same thing just inversed from the ict market maker buy model price creates an original consolidation it leaves that area you'll get a first stage accumulation second stage reaccumulation 
Again, in the market maker sell model, you're not worried about the buy side of the curve. We're using this buy side of the curve for narrative, okay? I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. So we have the original consolidation, smart money reversal. This is where price moves from the buy side of the curve to the sell side of the curve. On the sell side of the curve, there's multiple potential entries. You have the low risk sell. This is where price will, you'll see in this price area, this fractal price action, you'll find the breaker, which is the ICT concept. You'll find the 2022 model, okay? You'll find order blocks, okay? So after that, you have the first stage distribution. Price will typically tap into an order block or a fair value gap in this. And then you do have the second stage redistribution, Okay, after that, this is where you get the sharpest and quickest moves down as smart money is in a hurry to take out the stops over here. Now, what do I mean by we're just using the buy side of the curve for a narrative? Once I identify that a smart money reversal has taken place, which I'll be explaining in depth in this video, exactly how to identify when a smart money reversal takes place, which is again, when price moves from the buy side to the sell side of the curve. All right, I'm just using the buy side of the curve for narrative, which means that on the sell side of the curve, the purpose of price going down, the logic of price expanding lower is that smart money is net short up here. They're going to target these old lows, okay? Okay, because if they want to buy back their short position, they need someone to sell it to. When price breaks out beneath this old low, breakout traders are shorting, that creates sellers. They're engineering liquidity by taking out these lows. Anyone long, right, with a stop beneath any of these lows from this side, okay, let me uh, show an example of what that would look like, let's say someone's long right here, and their stop is right beneath that low, if they're long and they get stopped out beneath this previous low, they have to sell their long position, okay, so that's creating sellers, right, so they have opportunity to get out of each one of these lows. So that's how I'm using the buy side of the curve just to identify lows that smart money can potentially exit at. So these could be potential partial levels. The ultimate objective though, just as it was for the market maker buy model is the original consolidation to target. Okay. So this is what a market maker sell model looks like. Okay. How do I identify the original consolidation? This isn't something ICT taught. This is just from my personal experience to keep it very simple. Okay, again, let's say that this is a one minute time frame. I'm zooming out to a higher time frame, right? Let's say that this is an hourly price will create a low smart money reversal. I'm just targeting that low. So it's likely to create a low high lower low on a higher time frame. I'm targeting this low, right? As we move on to the real chart examples, you'll see what I mean. Now, here's a gem for you guys. Smart money reversals unless at all time highs always take two forms of liquidity. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay. Well, if we go over here, I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Here is a higher time frame liquidity pool. Okay. So this is, let's say that this is buy side liquidity on a four hour time frame. In a market maker sell model, it will always take out two forms of liquidity or it's closely correlated asset will take out two forms of liquidity, which is where it does something like this creates a short term high runs the higher time frame buy side liquidity and then reverses you may look at this and say well how is this two forms of liquidity right here well we have this high above this old high is also buy side liquidity so this is your first level of buy side liquidity your second level of buy side liquidity is your higher time frame liquidity pool or your key level in every smart money reversal okay it will always take out two forms of liquidity all right or it's closely correlated asset will take out two forms of liquidity. Now, how do you predict a smart money reversal? All right? This is the key question right here. All right. So we get that there's market maker buy and market maker sell models, but how do you know once it's switched from buy to sell programs? So something that I personally use and something that you will be able to find in your own charts if you seriously go in and study. At every single smart money reversal, there is always an SMT divergence. An SMT divergence is a crack in correlation between correlated assets, which means you're comparing the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500 to each other. They should be moving in sync normally. When it breaks that correlation, there is a crack in correlation, and that can give us an indication that a smart money reversal is in and price can move from that sell program into the buy program. Okay, so before I show you guys what SMT divergence is, which is exactly what we'll be going into next, 
I just want to show you guys an example of me trading the market maker model. Now, there's a lot of ICT students out there and they're just out there trying to teach the concepts, but I'm here with receipts to show you guys that I can actually trade these market maker models beforehand. So I want to show you guys an example of what that looks like. Here is me trading the buy side of the curve and the sell side of the curve in a market maker model. Okay, so this is, again, not something that you should be worrying about at all, but think about this area over here to the left as your original consolidation. I'm waiting for price to reach a key level up in here. Okay, this is your original consolidation. I'm waiting for it to reach a key level. What's the key level? Well, I'm waiting for price to tap into a PD array from this side and then also create SMT divergence up there. Okay, so I'm longing in that direction because I'm waiting for it to tap into the key level. So I'm trading the manipulation up, right? I'm getting out and then I'm entering a short at the smart money reversal level and I'm targeting the original consolidation. Now, this is extremely advanced. You're not going to be able to do this as soon as you watch this video and just go straight into the charts. But I just kind of want to show you guys how this is forming here. We have the smart money reversal. Here's me catching the top of that, right? This little wick right here, now it may seem a little weird and you might not be able to identify that at first, but this little wick is the low risk sell. Okay, think about a lower time frame from this candle's low to this candle's high on a lower time frame, that's a retracement. Okay, so sometimes it's not always super pronounced that low risk sell. That's your low risk sell right there. This right here is your first stage accumulation. Price is tapping into the fair value gap right there. All right. As we let the video play out, okay, price does retrace back up. Okay, all of this is just time distortion in here. So we're just getting consolidation before expansion back down. This right here, this fair value gap, right? This is your second stage redistribution before price targets the original consolidation from over here. All right, so this is me trading the buy side of the curve and the sell side of the curve in a market maker sell model again in a market maker sell model your focus should just be to trade the sell side of the curve this is extremely advanced so i'm just showing you guys this to prove that i'm not just an ict hindsight student slash teacher okay because that's a big thing in this trading community that a lot of ict students are just cherry picking stuff looking in hindsight but here's me trading both sides of the curve of a market maker sell model now if you guys would like to see more content from me i actually trade this market maker model in my discord and i do post out where i believe the live market is drawing towards i'm not doing live streams but i do have a channel in here throughout the day if i do see a market maker model or other ict models that i like i will alert it to the discord members okay so here is on may 2nd here is the NQ five minute chart. It said it looks like a market maker buy model on the NASDAQ. Buy side liquidity above is the draw on liquidity in my opinion. So this is the buy side of the curve. Price was tapping into an order block as I said earlier in the video. This is typically what the accumulation leg or reaccumulation of a market maker buy model would look like. Okay, so I'm anticipating for price to draw up into the buy side liquidity. And you could see that it nicely did drop into that and later in the day it did take out this high and even higher so here is my executions on that trading when price retested the order block and then targeting the buy side liquidity i do also post my higher time frame draw on liquidity when it is clear to me so this was on the dow i said 38,527 buy side or range high is the next draw on liquidity okay, and that did deliver nicely in the discord i do also have three sections where i have two video sections in there one of them shows how to trade ICT concepts from beginner to advance with a course in there with eight videos. I have another course in there, which is a time-based model trading a specific 60 minutes of the day. There's three videos in depth, how to trade that model. And then also a library of about 30 videos explaining ICT concepts and dropping gems. So I have a lot to offer in this discord. If you guys are interested in any of that, there is a three day free trial. You can find that first link down below. So now let's discuss what SMT divergence is. SMT divergence, like I previously said, is a crack in correlation between correlated assets. In order to understand when this smart money reversal can happen, when price can move to the sell side of the curve, to the buy side of the curve, or from the buy side to the sell side, in order to predict this smart money reversal, it is key to understand SMT divergence Okay, so we're going to be discussing what bullish SMT divergence is, and then I'll be diving into what bearish SMT divergence is. As I said, 
YM, ES, and NQ. YM is just the Dow Jones futures. Okay, I'm comparing these three closely correlated assets. Since they are closely correlated, they should be moving in sync with one another. So when one makes a lower low, the other should make a lower low, and the other should make a lower low. When it cracks that correlation, this is what we call SMT divergence. It's pretty much smart money tipping their hand, saying that we're actively trading this. All right. So as you can see in this example, we do have YM or the Dow and then ES or the S&P 500 creating lower lows here. NASDAQ creates a higher low. Okay, so seeing this signature at a key level can show us that a smart money reversal is in. In this example, NQ, since it made the higher high, it cracked that correlation. All right, this can indicate a potential reversal and that price can start on the buy side of the curve. Now, when you're more advanced, you could trade in the low end of this. Okay, what I recommend is just waiting for the smart money reversal to be in, wait for the displacement away after that SMT divergence, and wait through speed through some bearish PD arrays in there. So that's what bullish SMT divergence looks like. Bearish SMT divergence, just flip it, the exact same thing. We have the YM and SP 500, so Dow and SP 500 creating higher highs here. So you're comparing the same highs on each price chart, this high. And this high on s p 500 and dow it ran that high on the nasdaq it didn't notice how it didn't pop above that same exact high this is a crack in correlation between correlated assets so this is your bearish s t divergence what you can wait for is you can wait for speed away indicating that price is likely to create a smart money reversal if you're more advanced you could trade in that upper end of that I do recommend just waiting for the displacement, waiting for extra confirmation that a smart money reversal is in. At every single smart money reversal, there is always going to be SMT divergence. That is key in understanding market maker models. All right, so now let's look at a real chart example of what that would look like. Now you look at this chart and all of a sudden, it doesn't look textbook to this. This is where a lot of people get confused. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to simplify that. All right, so this is a market maker buy model. Here is your original consolidation right over here. Okay, so this is where the market was in a consolidation. It left that consolidation. This is the sell side of the curve. It's engineering old highs to target them on the buy side of the curve. All right, this is the smart money reversal down here. And what do you know? If you study it, there is an SMT divergence between this low and this low. Compare the S&P 500 to the Dow Jones between these respective lows. S&P 500 made a lower low, Dow Jones made a higher low. Okay, so this can indicate that a potential market maker model is in play. As price starts to trade higher, it trades back down lower. A lot of people don't understand market maker models. Your low risk buy is not all the way up here. Your low risk buy is immediately after that smart money reversal comes in, that first next low right next to it, okay? This is your low risk buy right in here. I'm just going to categorize that as LRB for now. All right. Now, ICT did teach in this specific video. He was saying, notice exactly where he has the low risk short right up in here. See how it's that wick right next to the smart money reversal right to the right of it. He said some of your newer students, they're going to mark this as the low risk short. And he said it's not incorrect doing that. So you could mark that either way. You could either use that wick or you could use this level right here because he knows he said in the video some of the newer students you're not going to be able to identify it right there so if you identify it on that next low right there that's completely fine so utilizing that logic over here this is really where the low risk buy is but even if you identify it at any of these lows to the right of that right there's no problem with doing that so this is the low risk buy where you could say that these lows right in close proximity to that smart money reversal that first low really before the next expansion move this is your low risk buy in here okay in this fractal of price action if we do go down to a lower time frame right this is where you're going to find the ict 2022 model this is where you're going to find breakers this is where you're going to find order blocks all right so this is your breaker right here we have this last up close candle so this could be your breaker entry this is what you can enter in the low risk buy portion all right, or when price trades back down into this fair value gap, you could trade that as well. There's multiple things that you could trade here. Order block. Most of his PD arrays are going to be in this fractal price action. So here's your order block right here. All right, so any of those you could trade in the low risk buy portion. As price is trading higher, okay, right here is your first stage accumulation. 
Okay, in this first stage accumulation, it could be doing a few things. All right, any PD array from this side of the curve. So you have the original consolidation, cell side of the curve. Okay, on the cell side of the curve, there's bearish PD arrays. All of those on the buy side of the curve are getting disrupted and they're actually being used as inversion fair value gaps or inversion order blocks, okay? So as price is targeting now this original consolidation up in here, any bearish PD array should not be viewed as something where it can reject it. You, could, you should just look at it as a speed bump, all right? So this fair value gap over here on the buy side of the curve, it can act as resistance for a short period of time, but eventually it's gonna break above there, retest that as support and continue higher. All right, so that's the only way that you should be using PD arrays from the left side of the curve or the sell side of the curve is just for price to, okay, it can resist it for a second, but eventually it's going to break over, retest it as support. So in this first stage accumulation, yeah, it's going to be retesting an inversion PD array, but most likely what it's going to be doing is retesting an order block. This is what you want to pay attention to is what I mean. An order block and a fair value gap, okay? Those are things where, what price will retest in the first stage accumulation. So, so far we do have the smart money reversal. This is where the smart money reversal comes in right here. Okay, we had the SMT as there always is, okay? Then the low risk buy, first stage accumulation. And then over here, price can retest again, a fair value gap or an order block for the second stage reaccumulation. All right, in this second stage reaccumulation, again, this is the one that ICT said, if he could only trade one model for the rest of his life, it would be this right here because it's low resistance liquidity runs. It's going to be fast movements to target the original consolidation. This is what it looks like really marked up on a chart. Original consolidation, smart money reversal with SMT. Always, it's always going to be like that. It's never going to change. After the smart money reversal, low risk buy. This is where you could trade the breaker, the ICT 2022 model, things like that. First stage reaccumulation, order block and a fair value gap is typically what price will retest. Second stage reaccumulation, same thing. And then price is going to create a sharp movement upwards for the original consolidation target over here. So this is what the market maker buy model looks like. Now, if I remove that lipstick, see how we see all the minor flux fluctuations in price. If I look at a 12 hour time frame, see how it becomes more simple now. I could just look at this high as the original consolidation. That's so that's personally in my mind how I simplify it, right? We have a high. This high started the displacement lower. That's where it's going to target. On the lower time frame, that just looks like an original consolidation. So that's personally how I view the original consolidation to make it simple. I just zoom out and go, all right, this is the high where it started the delivery down. That's going to be where it targets on the buy side of the curve. All right, so now let's dive into the ICT market maker sell model. All right, in this example, here is our original consolidation where price is consolidating. It leaves that consolidation. Okay, here is your smart money reversal. All right, and in the smart money reversal, again, there's always going to be SMT. So if you do compare the closely correlated assets, all right, there's going to be SMT between this high to this low. I believe it was on NASDAQ or the Dow. I can't remember, but one of them created a higher high here. So that's the crack in correlation. This is the signal that the smart money reversal is potentially in. All right. Now, what you can wait for is this placement lower to indicate that it's likely on the sell side of the curve. If you're more advanced, you could trade it up in there. So this high right here, this is your low risk sell, right? If we take a look at this video that I referred to earlier, look where ICT has the low risk short. It's that next lower high right next to that upper wick. Now, he did say a lot of his students will see this as the low risk sell. Okay, he said there's nothing wrong with doing that because it's hard to identify it in that upper wick right there. So if you can't identify it there, you could identify this as the low risk sell. And in that video, ICT said there's nothing wrong with that. All right, so we'll say that this is the low risk sell, okay, because this is the easiest to identify here. We'll say that this right here, this retracement up, this is the first stage distribution. All right, and in that first stage distribution, it's going to be retesting a fair value gap or an order block. All right, so you could trade it out of there, target lower prices. All right, here is your second stage redistribution. So in the second stage redistribution, this is ICT. Again, this is the one that he said, if you only have one model to trade, it would be this one. Notice how it does retest the order block in here. 
All right, so typically in the first stage and second stage redistribution, you're trading in price retest, fair value gaps, or order blocks in the low risk sell or at the smart money reversal, right? Again, you could identify either of these. This is the one that ICT identifies just because it's that lower high right next to the smart money reversal, All right? There was SMT between this high and this high. If you do compare the closely correlated assets, All right? So if zooming out for a second, original consolidation, smart money reversal, low risk sell, first stage distribution, second stage distribution. If you had the low risk sell up here, you'd have to move everything up, right? This would have to be the first stage distribution up here. So I, again, ICT said it's okay to mark out either of these, whichever one's clear to you, All right? If we do scale down to the lower time frame, again, these are going to be fair value gap and order block retests likely in the first stage distribution and second stage distribution. Sometimes this first stage one can still be up there with the breaker, All right? If it's not displacing right away, but if we do zoom into a lower time frame here, okay, after the smart money reversal, this is typically where you will find the breaker, the 2022 model, the change in the state delivery with the order block. Those are things that you could trade after the smart money reversal. All right. So there is a plethora of models that you could trade within this market maker model, which is why it's my favorite model, right? Because I know, all right, I missed the smart money reversal. It's all right. I'll take the low risk sell. Oh, I missed the low risk sell. I'll take the first stage distribution. Miss the first stage distribution, I have the second stage redistribution before it trades down to the original consolidation. Sometimes even after that, you do get minor retraces where it does give one more retrace and there is more. In my experience, I've seen more than just the second stage redistribution. Sometimes I've even seen a third. All right, ICT, I haven't really heard him talk about that, but sometimes there is a third retrace, right? Before it does tag into the original consolidation. If we do zoom out, let's look at a four hour time frame. Look, it looks very simple now because how do we identify that original consolidation? Where is the low where it started the delivery higher for the buy side of the curve? Okay, well, that's going to be this low right here. Price created a high. I'm going to target that low where it started the delivery higher. That's how I find my original consolidation. Then zooming down to a lower time frame, right? Now it looks clear. Okay, though well, this is the this is the original consolidation. So that's personally how I, again, keep it simple. All right, so I just gave you guys a ton of information. Now I wanna show you guys how, if I'm looking at a chart, how am I going to identify a market maker model? What's the process I go about? So if I'm going on to this NASDAQ chart, I'm looking at the daily. The first thing I see is that price took out sell side liquidity over here. I'm trying to figure out the next higher time frame likely expansion. All right, price took out the sell stops, but then it displaced back up and closed over this down close candle. That's a change in the state delivery. An order block got created here. What's next likely to happen is for price to start targeting buy side liquidity. So these old highs have buy stops above them. All right. As price retraces back down, I'm going to mark out a higher time frame key level. That could be an order block. That could be a fair value gap. Price likes to key off of those and create SMT divergence off of those key PDRAs, whether that be an order block, a fair value gap, in this example, price tapped into the fair value gap. It also tapped into it right here. So in this lower area, the higher time frame likely expansion is already higher because price took out sell stops, it displaced up, and then it returned back down into a fair value gap. There's a cluster of highs above. That's the draw on liquidity. When price returns into a key PD array, which is this fair value gap right here, you're not just randomly buying that fair value gap, you're scaling down to a lower time frame seeing if there is SMT divergence at it. We had that right here between the NASDAQ and Dow, okay? As soon as we have that, that's an indication that price could potentially reverse. And then it, we see that huge wick right there. It's wicking this previous low. So wicks do the damage, bodies tell the story. Look where the body closed above, way above this previous low. That's an indication right away that smart money has bought the sell stops. Plus we have the SMT confirmation. Plus, we are already trading in the higher time frame likely expansion. Okay, so we're trading in the direction of that higher time frame likely expansion. That's how I would go about it. All right, so if you're confused, you're finding a higher time frame bias. Is it likely to expand higher or lower? Okay, you're going to mark out key PDRAs. What could that be? Fair value gaps in the higher time frame. Typically, I like to look at fair value gaps. That's most important to me, but I could also mark out 
order blocks or breakers on a higher time frame. Those are going to be my higher time frame key levels. I'm waiting for price to retest those. Then I'm looking for SMT out of those key levels, right? And that could potentially provide a market maker buy model or market maker sell model. That's how I personally go about it. That's going to be the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed, please like and share, and I will see you guys later.